Cool. So before uh, we get started, thanks Anna for introducing me. Um, before we get started, I just wanted to go over a couple of logistics. Um, so you guys should be seeing a uh, raise your hand uh, button. So I might ask a couple of questions during the demo. And then if you guys want to respond as yes, feel free to use that raise your hand uh, icon there. Um, and then you also should be seeing a questions tab. So that's what you can use to uh, ask any uh, questions if you have any. Um, and I'll try to answer them if I can during it. If not, we can answer it uh, separately, uh, like at the end of the call. OK, let's get started. So uh, we are going to be talking about scaling out Postgres, uh, just to also test our raise your hand button and also to get understanding of uh, how much uh, we guys are familiar with Postgres. How many of you have used Postgres in the past? Cool. Uh, I see a few hands raised. Uh, yeah, and it's increasing. OK, so quite a few of you. So, uh, Postgres, as we've all, uh, like since you guys have already heard about it, used it, uh, it's one of the most popular uh, databases and is increasing in pop popularity over the years. And that's thanks to the robust system it's built over a period of uh, the last 30 years, while also adding many new features, which allows it to address uh, modern day use cases. Uh, and then it's not just me who thinks uh, Postgres is super cool. Uh, if you look at this graph, this graph actually talks about uh, all the different uh, database job postings on Hacker News for the last uh, six years or so. And then uh, these are postings, database job postings, which mention one specific technology. Uh, and then as you can see, Postgres uh, in 2011 was around 10%, but now it's grown to something like 50% uh, of the job postings. But today's demo is about Citus Cloud. So what we are going to be discussing here is uh, on Citus. Uh, one second. OK. Um, yeah, sorry, that was a technical issue. Um, yeah, so what we're going to be discussing here is about Citus Cloud. Uh, how many of you have uh, used Citus, whether it's the open source edition, enterprise edition, or uh, any of the uh, Citus Cloud features? Uh, you can use the raise your hand uh, button for that. Cool. Uh, looks like quite a lot of you have uh, seen it before. For the others, this might serve as a quick introduction. Uh, so Citus is basically an extension to Postgres, which transforms it into a distributed database. So you can think of it uh, as, uh, from an application perspective, you talk to it as if you're talking to a single node Postgres. And then behind the covers, your data is split across a cluster of machines. And then when you send in queries, Citus uh, routes those queries to the right servers or runs them in parallel across all the different servers. And Citus Cloud is our fully managed database as a service. So where we run Citus for you, we take care of keeping the database up and running and also take care of replication, backups, et cetera. We'll get into details of all these as a part of the demo, uh, but then just wanted to give a quick introduction. Uh, one interesting thing to keep in mind is Citus is not a fork of Postgres, uh, it is an extension. So the way we've packaged Citus is as an extension, that way, uh, whenever new releases of Postgres come out, uh, Citus is always in sync with them because we've not gone away from the mainstream of Postgres, but used the hooks and APIs which Postgres provides us uh, to be able to uh, give you all these features. Uh, and that has two benefits. For example, our customers, when JSON and JSONB were out, asked, when can I use JSONB with Citus? Uh, and then what the, our answer was right now, because all the extension frameworks allow us to integrate tightly with Postgres. And then the other advantage is you can use all the other uh, Postgres ecosystem tools, uh, et cetera, with uh, Citus as it is. So you can use your standard uh, connectors and those kinds of things uh, with Postgres and Citus. So the Citus extension is open source. You can go on to GitHub, type in citusdata.com, citusdata slash citus, and then you can look at our repository there. Uh, citus is available other than the open source version in three ways, uh, other than the open source version in two ways. So one, you can take the open source version, download it, install it wherever you'd like. There's also an enterprise edition, 
uh, which has some more features in addition to the open source edition. Uh, so that has features like the shard rebalancer, which allows you to uh, add more machines without taking down any downtime on your application. And then uh, going from, let's say, two nodes to four nodes, four nodes to eight nodes, any of that while keeping your application online. Um, and it has several other such features, which most of our uh, customers like to use in production. And in addition to that, uh, we have Citus Cloud, which is what we are going to be using in this demo. And then that's a fully managed database as a service, which runs the enterprise edition. So you get all the features you get with the enterprise edition, while uh, we us with us managing the database for you as well. So now that we have a decent idea of okay, what Citus is, how can I get it? And in case uh, you feel one of your use cases can be a very good fit for Citus, how can I try it out by going through uh, our GitHub and downloading Citus? Uh, what kind of applications are users building with Citus? Uh, so primarily we've seen uh, two patterns emerge in terms of the kinds of application. One of them is a multi-tenant application. So these are fast growing SaaS applications, uh, whether it's a sales automation, marketing automation, uh, it might be in the finance uh, field, in any of those fields where you have system of records um, whose data is becoming too big to fit on a single node Postgres and you want to scale it out without having to re-architect the whole application. So that's a use case where people have used Citus to scale out their uh, system of record database to several nodes and continue to grow and add more customers. On uh, the other common use case is uh, real-time analytics applications. So these are applications which your users are using to get insights into, uh, let's say, whether it's web data, whether it's cybersecurity data. And then there you have lots of data which you're collecting uh, that may be billions and billions of records. And then within that time, uh, within a sub-second time duration, you want to get quick responses to those uh, queries. So there, uh, Citus can use the massively parallel engine it has to give you uh, faster responses to those kinds of queries. Cool. Uh, so before we've gone through a short introduction, um, before we dive into the demo itself, I wanted to uh, talk about a few terms I'll be using. Uh, I'll just go over them quickly right now. And then as we continue to do uh, the demo, I'll explain them in greater detail. So uh, from an architectural perspective, Citus has two types of nodes. Uh, one of them is a coordinator node and the other are the worker nodes. So the coordinator is the one where your application will be connecting to. Uh, so in your single node Postgres, that's the, uh, that's the node which you'll be connecting to. Similarly, you'll be connecting to only a single endpoint in Citus. But behind the covers, your data will be split across a set of worker nodes. Uh, so a coordinator node, the node which you connect to, worker node, the node which actually stores data. Now on Citus Cloud, when you provision a Citus cluster, which includes a coordinator and worker nodes, that's called a formation. Uh, so we say, okay, we'll spin up a new formation, we'll create a new formation. So that's what we'll call it when we look at it on Citus Cloud. Uh, now the way Citus splits your data or uh, across multiple nodes is by sharding. And then what shards are, are basically just smaller chunks of data from a large table. So let's say you have a table which has a billion records. You may have multiple smaller chunks of the table, each of them having, let's say, uh, 100 million uh, records. And then in practice, it's uh, actually just a single smaller Postgres table. So if you have three nodes, you may have smaller Postgres tables on each of them. Uh, let's say 10, 10 on each of them. So you'll have 30 shards for your whole table. Uh, we'll talk about briefly about Wally, -E, which is the mechanism Citus Cloud uses for backups. Uh, wall logs are basically Postgres, uh, like, like most uh, databases, relational databases, you have write ahead log, uh, which they use for uh, durability. And then that's what uh, Wally -E is a tool which allows you to ship those wall logs uh, for disaster recovery and backup purposes. So we'll be talking about that. And then we'll be talking about a few Citus Cloud features. Uh, we've listed a few on this slide. Uh, we talked about high availability, replication, backups, disaster recovery, uh, and I'll go into details about each of them uh, while, we are talk while we are doing the demo. Cool, uh, so let's get started with the demo. Uh, this is actually the screen you would see if you were to provision a new Citus Cloud cluster. 
just in the interest of time i have already provisioned a cluster let me actually move to that screen cool uh, so you should be now seeing uh, my screen which has the citus cloud interface so this is basically what you will see once you provision a new new uh, formation as i described previously a formation is basically a citus cluster uh, on citus cloud and what you will see here is the connection url so this is your standard postgres connection url uh, which you can plug into your jdbc uh, this is your jdbc connection string basically which you can put it in any application you would like or you can use it with psql as i am going to do now so as i mentioned you can just connect directly to citus uh, cloud using this connection string as you can see, uh, Citus Cloud has already installed Citus for us on this, uh, and we have the latest version of the Citus extension 7.2 uh, installed on this machine. Uh, so for this demo, we'll actually be doing the demo with the GitHub events data set. So GitHub actually uh, is gracious enough to make all the events which happen on public repositories downloadable uh, for us to analyze. And then that's what we are going to be uh, doing this demo with. Uh, these events can be events like pull requests, creating a new repository, adding a comment, any of those, and those are all captured in this data set. Um, before I uh, dive deep into this, uh, there are there is going to be some Postgres related syntax uh, on this, uh, and then I'll tell you where there is site specific things. Most of what you will see will just be standard Postgres commands. So, for example, the create table commands uh they are all standard postgres commands the alter table command so i'll just actually go ahead and run these commands uh and i'm not going to dive deep into what these do this basically is just defining a table and adding a couple of uh, keys to it and then i'll do that again uh, for the users table which basically stores metadata about individual users i'll also go ahead and create a couple of indexes uh on this table and as Citus is a Postgres extension, you can basically use all uh, like different data types uh, or, and all different index types with Citus. So till now, what we have done is all standard Postgres. Uh, but now, uh, what this is the command which basically transforms that table into a distributed table. So I'll actually go ahead and run this command and then we can talk about what it does. So now I have distributed both the tables. Uh, on running this command, what happens behind the covers is one, uh, Citus uh, gets to know that, okay, this table is now a distributed table. So when I want to uh, run any queries or if someone wants to run queries on this table, I should plan it for distributed execution. And the second thing it does is actually, it goes and creates shards on the worker nodes. So those are actually nothing but smaller Postgres tables, but then uh, as we discussed, that's the way Citus splits your data across the different. And now I'll actually load some data. Uh, this takes about a minute or so, which should give us time to talk about a few other things. Uh, also discuss the schema and the other things in greater detail. Uh, so in terms of the GitHub event schema, as you can see, it basically has metadata about each event. So you can see what repository the event went on, uh, what repository was the event conducted on, which user conducted it, what was the organization that repository belonged to, so on and so forth. Uh, the very interesting field here is the payload JSONB field, uh, which basically has information around uh, what kind of uh, metadata do you want on those particular events. Uh, so let's say you have uh, an event which is uh, a pull request the kind of metadata you want to capture on a pull request like what kind of commits you have in there those kinds of things is very different from what you want to do in a create repository um, so that is one thing which you can do which this payload field uh, and allows us to store uh, semi semi-structured objects in the json b field and we also have the users table each uh, user table basically each row in the user table basically is just for one user where you can have uh, okay this is a summarize account this is his avatar this is his login name so on and so forth in terms of indexes uh, we have uh, created a normal b tree index here and then we've also created a gin index on the payload json b field um, and then that's the field uh, gin indexes are basically postgres's way of uh, indexing within the json objects so that when you run queries uh, which ask uh, things 
which which query the things which are present deep nested in the json you are able to answer them uh, in postgres cool uh, the copy went through for the events table i'll actually run it for the users table as well and we have the data loaded cool um, so to start with let's just uh, i'll actually also enable timing uh, to get an idea of how much time uh, each query takes So we'll just basically initially just count how many events we have in the table uh, So this query uh, Counts all the 1.1 million row events we have and it does that in roughly 60 milliseconds uh, And the way we uh, are able to do this is going to be similar to some of the other queries So I will walk you through how we were able to scan about a million plus records in 60 milliseconds or so um, we'll do we'll do this analysis with a slightly more interesting query, uh, which is basically how many commits occur uh, on GitHub on a per hour basis. So if you look at this, uh, this query displays uh, the results of that. It takes roughly 200 milliseconds or so. Uh, and then the way we are able to achieve those speed ups is by using. Exp uh, I can show you that using standard Postgres explain plans. So if you guys like most of you did indicate that you are familiar with postgres so you might be using explain to tune your queries at different indexes and do things like that um, and as i mentioned citus is an extension so it hooks into the explain mechanism to show you what it is doing underneath the covers so this if you see is your standard postgres if you were to run this query on postgres this is what you will see you will see a scan of the table and then the grouping uh, and the final sorting but then this part is what Citus is adding. So Citus splits your query into 32 smaller chunks and runs all of them in parallel, being able to use all the cores in the system to compute your query. And this is not just restricted to one node. If you had 10 nodes and each of them had 32 cores, you this query would be computed over 320 cores. And then on the coordinator, you do a final sorting operation to display the results and if you note the citus is only doing a final aggregation so it's each shard is going to be returning just 24 rows and we are trying to push as much computation as possible close to the data we'll also go over a join query so if you look at the join query uh, we are able to join the 1.1 million row table with roughly the 200k row table uh, in around 140 milliseconds and uh, what's interesting this what this query does is basically tells you how many which are the co co users who created the most number of repositories uh, so if you look at uh, the explain plan for this one So if you look at this, uh, you can see that the query is still being pushed down completely to the data node. So the join operation completely happens on the data node. And then uh, only the final aggregation happens on the coordinator. And what this query is doing is uh, pretty interesting. Uh, I mean, it looks like a very simple query, but it's doing something very interesting, which is doing joins, which is a very core relational concept where you're having two tables. One of them is... Uh, the events table and the users table and you're joining them while also looking into a semi-structured json b object which is what typical NoSQL systems do which is you have a large json object and you want to look into it so this uh, query even though it looks simple uh, is something which i like to demo because it does something very interesting um i'll take a pause at this point and um, are there any questions uh, any of you have Okay, I see a question about uh, what about a write query? Will that also be low on latency? So that's a good question. So what Citus does for the write queries is uh, it uses a different executor, which is known as a router executor. That's something which I will describe uh, just right now. Um, so I will get into how the write queries work. The write queries will also be routed. Uh, so they won't be using the executor we are using here, which is the real time executor. Based on the query, Citus will swap your executors to give you lower latency on lookup queries or other kinds of write queries. Uh, are there any other questions? Okay, and feel free to keep putting in questions. If you have any, I will uh, pause at times and then answer them. And then if I'm not able to get to them at that moment, I'll get to them at the end. 
so now we'll talk about uh, the kind of query which uh, one of our uh, like uh, attendees asked about which is what happens if you do a quick insert query so that will follow a similar mechanism to what we'll do now where you are doing a lookup on a particular shard key so you are saying okay find me all the events for this particular user and if you look at this this becomes a low latency query it takes around 2 milliseconds obviously there'll be a bit variance in this because it's highly latency dependent uh, but then this query basically takes a single digit milliseconds and the reason it can do that is will be visible using the explain plan uh, if you look at this uh, it actually has swipe swapped the executor to a router executor so citus has a few dynamic executors which it decides to use based on what kind of query is being issued and because this query has a filter on user ID, which was our sharding dimension, uh, we are able to route this query only to a big, single particular node. Uh, and then that's what will happen with your inserts, your updates, your deletes. And when your inserts and updates and deletes uh, have the user ID dimension, Citus will figure out, okay, this particular thing exists only on one node. Uh, and then I'm going to quickly just route it using a very lightweight executor to get single millisecond latencies. If you have writes which span across nodes, uh, Citus also does that in a consistent manner by doing a two-phase commit to make sure that the transaction either goes through on all the different shards. Let's say you're doing an update which spans across all shards. Um, Citus will make sure it either goes through on all the shards or it errors. We'll also do a quick uh, join query, which is similar in nature, which is uh, again for a particular user. And then as you can see, this also takes around 13 milliseconds. And obviously it's latency dependent. Next time we run it, it might be two milliseconds or so, but generally uh, it is around a single digit milliseconds uh, for getting these kinds of results. So we demoed two kinds of queries. The first one, uh, we talked about the two use cases for Citus, and then I want to correlate the queries we ran with those use cases. So we talked about uh, the real time analytics where you would use parallel querying to get quick responses on those results and then those were the kinds of queries we ran in the beginning so where you have go, we, are, we are going over all the data doing computations and displaying certain results on the dashboards uh, and in the multi-tenant kind of applications uh, you have more uh, single lookups or uh, you shard your data let's say it's a SaaS application so you would shard your data by customer id and then uh, all your queries will mostly be for a single customer. So there Citus can use the router executor to give you low latency results. So I, I see a question. Uh, so if the right query across all shards phase, how do you do a partial rollback? Uh, so what we do for write queries is using two-phase commit. Uh, so that's a consistency protocol which is generally used for, uh, let's say, uh, like you want to do a commit across uh, a few different servers. So what we'll do is we'll ask each server and we can go into, uh, we, or we can send you details about the details of how that protocol works. But what we will do is basically ask each of those uh, shards to acknowledge that they can do that commit and uh, if they all acknowledge and make a note that they have to do that commit only then we will have it go through so it will it will actually have a, a completely commit kind of a behavior and only if all of them agree to commit then we'll do the commit otherwise we'll do the rollback and if you are interested uh, uh, if you are interested in more details we have more info in our documentation cool uh, so now we uh, thought about a few use cases. Uh, we talked about the few kinds of queries uh, and we all have this on the cluster of two machines. Let me actually go back to the Citus Cloud Console at this point. And then uh, what we'll do now is expand this uh, cluster from two machines uh, to four machines. And uh, for that, you have fields on the settings tab. So in this settings tab, you can actually increase uh, in multiple dimensions. You can scale up or scale out. So what I'll do now is go from two nodes to four nodes, and then I'll click on resize formation. So it takes Amazon roughly uh, five minutes for us, uh, for Amazon to give us the machines, and then we'll install Postgres and Citus on top of it. And in the meanwhile, I can uh, talk about Citus Cloud, uh, as this demo is also about uh, the cloud product uh, as much as it is about Citus. Uh, and then we can discuss the different features it provides and what it does for you. 
Um, so as I described previously, Citus Cloud is our uh, fully managed database as a service on top of Amazon. Uh, so what we have here is uh, like we use basically, uh, we set up monitoring for your uh, machines. We take care of backups, replication, high availability uh, for you using this solution. Uh, so what you can see here, this is our standard uh, overview tab, which just tells you, okay, now we are having four machines in this cluster and also gives an information that our formation is scaling to four nodes. Uh, it shows you the Postgres version, Citus version, what kind of tables you have, what they are distributed on, things like that. Um, while we go to the nodes tab, you can also see how each node is. You can see the node health. Uh, and then this is just for a status checking. Citus Cloud has monitoring in the background, which will keep uh, checking your nodes, figuring out, okay, uh, this particular node has this issue. Let me solve it in this way, things like that. So all these monitoring processes will take care of everything for you. This is just a way for you to know, okay, this node is healthy or not. Um, you can also set up different roles if you'd like. Uh, so you can say, okay, I want a read-only role, I want a write-only role, um, and then I want to give this ac user access to these tables, this user access to these tables, things like that. Uh, we also have a few other tabs here, active queries, uh, where it shows you what are your queries currently running with the transaction age, uh, query age. So if there's a query which has been running for a day and you look at it here, we also give you the PID to allow you to kill that query. Uh, we also show you certain metrics for the coordinator and on the per node level so that you can monitor each node individually. And so this, when we were running the queries, you can see here uh, the node CPU utilization went up. Similarly, there are quite a few metrics. I won't dive into all, what all those metrics are, but then uh, this allows you to get an insight into your cluster. This is the logs tab where you can see the logs from each of those servers. So there you can see, uh, okay, for this is what is happening on the coordinator server. This is what is happening. And these are standard Postgres logs, by the way. So the error messages or the things you see in here would be standard Postgres things. Uh, and then we also allow you to, obviously this much logs might not be enough for you to do all kinds of analysis you like. So we allow you to create a new log destination and then pump this data to any log provider of your choice, whether that's Logly, Sumo Logic, or anything else which basically accepts a syslog stream. You should be able to pump your logs there and then do searches in them, do analysis uh, down there. We'll get into a few of these things uh, a bit later. So the rebalancer is what you will use to scale out from. Uh, so right now what we are doing is just adding two more machines to the cluster. Uh, we are not going to be moving any data from uh, the existing machines to the new machines. That's a process which we will do as a part of the rebalance operation. Um, and while uh, we are waiting for the nodes, I would like to go into what kinds of things Citus Cloud does for you for the backups, uh, HA, and those kinds of things I talked about. So uh, I mentioned Wally in the initial slides where there was terminology. Uh, so that's what we use for backups. So we take minutely incremental backups every 60 seconds or 16 megabytes of wall logs, whichever comes first, we will ship your wall logs to a cold storage. In this case, uh, for Citus Cloud S3. So that way, if let's say you have a cluster this like this one in US East 1, and if the whole of US East were to go down, we will still be able to bring your data back up from the wall logs we have stored in S3. And that mechanism uh, we use for multiple other things, uh, for things like fork, point in time recovery, and for getting followers. So fork, uh, for example, uh, is a way for you to get a copy of your cluster. So let's say you have an existing cluster, and then you want to create uh, another cluster which has uh, exactly the same setup, the same data as your existing cluster. And the reason you want to do that is maybe you want to see how my cluster will behave if I increase 20% uh, of your own, 20% of the workload on my cluster. What will happen if I add 10 more customers? So if you want to do those kinds of experiments, you can fork your existing cluster as it stands and it will be a different from your production cluster. So there you can continue to do your analysis without having any impact to production. Uh, at times it might also be your analysts who want to do something there. Uh, we also have a, a feature for point in time recovery, which is because we have wall logs for the last uh, 10 days stored for you. Uh, if you want to say, okay, I want uh, a copy of my cluster as it was two days ago uh, at 7.35 PM, we will be able to give you that. 
and while this feature this is this feature while we rolled it out within a few days a lot of our customers benefited from it because while we all like to believe that we uh, who will go and delete data we will never drop our production tables it happens far too often for us to uh, ignore it and then in those situations uh, having uh, these kinds of backups and features where you can do a point in time recovery to whenever you want in the last 10 days uh, really proves to be useful as an example uh, for one of our customers uh, one of their customers accidentally deleted their own data and then they were asking them to can you please get that data back for us uh, we because of the point in time recovery feature we were able to get a copy of that cluster as it was before they ran the delete like the right the, the second before they ran the delete and then they were able to copy over their customer's data into the existing cluster. Uh, you can also create followers, uh, which is basically, I see a question. Yeah, that's a good question. So the question is how, how is point in time uh, backup taken across multiple shards? So in Postgres, for example, you have a create restore point. Similarly for Citus, we have a similar restore point where we create a restore point on all the nodes. And then after that, we start a backup from there. Uh, so not all the shards are globally locked around that time. It's basically we just uh, mark a point uh, where we say, okay, from here uh, for this, while we do the marking process, uh, that's how we will uh, do it in a consistent manner. And then we'll all back up all, or we'll bring all of them back up to that particular point in time. So it's just a marker is what we create across the different nodes. Uh, we were also talking about uh, followers. So what followers is, let's say you've heard of uh, use cases where you want to run some read-only queries behind the covers, right? Uh, so you, you don't want to impact your production, but you want to run some long-running analy analysis queries uh, on your cluster. So you can do that using the followers feature where you can have another cluster, which is always in sync with your existing cluster, and you can run queries on it. Cool. Uh, so we already have the two more nodes added, as you can see in the dashboard. So you can see all your existing shards are only on two nodes. And then you have two more shards, two more nodes. Uh, Citus Cloud is actually recommending a rebalance uh, where it's saying, OK, uh, this much, roughly this much data will be moved. I can see that there are two nodes which are empty. Uh, you should actually rebalance your cluster. And that's what we'll be doing. So if you query the Citus metadata tables, uh, all the Citus metadata tables are actually uh, Postgres tables, so you can run any queries on them. You can see that the data is stored only across two nodes, even though we now have four nodes in the cluster. And what we'll do now uh, is run the rebalance command, which allows you to, uh, so now it starts moving shards one by one. Uh, while some of us like me would prefer to look at the terminal screen, I would still go to the UI because uh, it's kind of cool to see visually how the shards are being moved from one node to the other. Uh, so if you look at this, these are the blue ones are the shard which are being moved and the green ones are the ones uh, where they are going to end up. Uh, and then if you can look at it, we're moving it on a one by one basis. That's where we don't uh, like fill up your whole cluster just because we are moving shards here and there. And one thing to keep in mind is this is happening as a fully online process. Uh, so if I were to go connect to the cluster, I have another connection to the cluster and run the query which we ran before, let's say the join query, we would still be able to run the query with uh, similar latency times. So if you look at this, uh, this is almost no impact uh, to your existing production customers. So all, while your, all your customers can continue to be up and running while you're expanding resources on your existing cluster. Uh, and this uh, allows you to basically elastically scale out your cluster across as many other nodes as you like. So while we wait for the rebalance to finish, uh, I can look at Uh, yeah, so the question is, is there any downtime when you scale out the nodes from two to four? Does my app need to change? The answer is no. Uh, you're initially, after you set up Citus, uh, you would follow the process which I followed just now uh, to scale out your cluster. So you had two nodes. We do the rebalance command. If you look at the queries, 
uh, I'm able to run queries on the cluster. These were write queries. Even read queries are not locked. We use logical replication behind the covers to achieve this. Uh, and then, so the answer is no changes to your application. At times, uh, our customers prefer to inform their customers that, okay, we are doing this kind of operation, but then that's not a requirement. Uh, cool. Uh, so I think those were the high level things we had for the demo. Uh, so now what we saw was, uh, and I see a few questions, I'll get to them. Uh, I'll just wrap up and then I'll get to them. So what we saw here uh, is we can run the join query again now. And then one thing you might have noticed is uh, we were moving pairs of shards. Uh, and the reason for that is Citus automatically figures out that both of these tables are sharded on user ID and then uh, be, they will join with each other on user ID. So Citus moves those shards together with each other, which allows you to run those queries uh, even when they were in flight or even now. And then, uh, yeah. Cool. Let me... So let me get back to the slides for the last couple of slides. We are done with the rebalance and now the data is distributed across the uh, four servers. Uh, and the join query runs in roughly 100 milliseconds right now. Uh, let me get back to the slides for a final uh, slide or so. So while I showed you a lot of all these features on like, okay, this is what is happening when you do X, uh, like we talked about backups, we talked a lot of things. I think what's most important is what value we are providing to our customers. And that's what uh, motivates me to come and work at Citus because then I can see customers who are not able to add uh, more customers for their website uh, by switching over to Citus, they are able to uh, grow their website beyond any boundaries. So you can go from uh, storing about a terabyte of data to tens of terabytes of data without having to spend months of engineering trying to rework your application or trying to manually implement your own sharding algorithm. And then uh, if you have a customer facing dashboard and then it becomes slow and your customers are complaining and after switching to Citus, I've seen uh, like performance improvements ranging anywhere from two to 100x. And then where you see, oh, my queries are now much more snappy, my customers are happier. And then that's what uh, motivates me to work at Citus. So while we discussed all the smaller features, I think the net uh, of it on what value does it provide to Citus's customers uh, this is what uh, makes me happy to work uh, on these things. Cool. Um, that's what we had uh, in the demo. Uh, you can, if you want to try out what I just tried out, we have instructions for this on our website as well. Uh, you can spin up a Citus Cloud uh, dev account. You can sign up for one. Uh, you can spin, sign up for a Citus Cloud account and spin up a dev cluster uh, to test this out. If you want to do it more specific to your workload, uh, you can also spin up larger clusters and continue to uh, like do more tests. We also have a public Slack channel, which you can uh, like ask any questions when you're starting out with Citus, and then we'd be happy to answer them. Uh, cool, that's what I had on the demo side. I see there are a few questions. I'll have to ask uh, Hannah, how are we on time? Uh, uh, yeah, we have a few minutes for questions. I'll uh, really quickly try to answer uh, most of them. If we are not able to answer any, we might uh, get back to that later. Uh, yeah, we can follow up with the answers to those questions. So one question is, how is the data distributed across nodes? Uh, so the answer is, uh, uh, it's distributed on hash. So based on the shard key, uh, you can hash your data. Uh, Citus hashes your data, and it uses standard Postgres hashing algorithms to do that. So basically, if you have a integer, uh, Postgres has an integer hashing function, and then that's what we will use uh, for that. And then you can basically override that hashing function with your own hashing function, uh, and then use that as well. Okay, I see another question. Regarding the sharding, can it also easily replicate small tables so they are local to each node? That's a very good question. And uh, we have a feature, right now we ran create distributed table commands, but we also have reference tables. Uh, and reference tables are basically tables which uh, are, there's a copy of that table across all nodes and Citus keeps them in sync. So that's for your small lookup kind of tables. So let's say you have your core fact table. 
and you have few of the dimension tables so for those dimension tables you can run them as uh, you can create them as reference tables and when you run inserts updates delete Citus will make sure that they are always in sync it will use the same 2pc protocol which we discussed about that allows you to do joins locally without having to move much data around um do you have uh, another question is do you have to scale out storage and compute together or then can they be scaled out independently uh that's a good question and you can do both so basically if you look at the Citus cloud dashboard uh, you might have seen that there is uh, let me actually show you that part So if you look at the settings tab, you can actually increase storage on each server going anywhere from 512 gigs to two terabytes. Uh, so if you just want to add more storage and you're happy with the current performance, you can increase that. If you want to increase performance and keep the same storage, you can increase the RAM or vCPU on each node. And then obviously you can increase the number of servers as well. That's the third dimension which Citus allows you to play around with. So you can increase uh, based on your application and its requirements, whatever resources you want. Cool. Uh, I had a question. Uh, if I, if we could see a raise of hands for uh, those kinds of things. Uh, one, like right now, this is running on top of Amazon, and then we've uh, received interest from uh, several of our customers on. Okay, do you want to run the? Uh, like, I want to run this on, let's say, Google or Azure or another cloud provider. Um, have, are any of you interested in something like that because that's something we talk about internally as well and receive as feedback so if you could uh, like raise hands for that um, okay cool I see a hand raised uh, and could you in the questions tab tell me whether it's more related to Google or Azure and that would be useful cool uh, and I think that's, we are uh, right on time. Uh, I think that's all I had. I see a few more questions and uh, we'll try to see how we can get back to you on those questions later. Uh, if there were things which you think I could have covered or things which uh, are any kind of feedback for us, feel free to send them to us. Uh, I think you'll get a feedback from or you can leave it in the questions uh, tab itself. Um, and then what we will do is look to get back to your questions. And also if you have any feedback, we look to incorporate it in future webinars. Thank you.